All right, uh, we were on number 11 on the practice exam four. All right, uh, which has the larger radius. All right, so when you have your periodic table, all right, so the smallest one is up here. And uh, the largest, so as you go from this way to this way, you're going to decrease. And as you go down, you're going to increase. All right, and so the largest one is the lower left. Smallest one is the upper right. So when you uh, are given your choice between sodium and lithium, you look on your handy dandy periodic table and you find your sodium that is over here and your uh, lithium, which is right above it. All right, and so as, as it increases when it goes down and it asks which has the larger radius, well, the sodium is larger than lithium. All right, and the second one was fluorine or chlorine. All right, so again, you get your periodic table, you find fluorine, it is right here, and then you find chlorine, it's right below it. So as you increase when you go down, chlorine is larger than fluorine. All right, then we get into some uh, ones that have charges. And so when you have an F minus, versus a neon, note that they have the same electron configuration. So F minus 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. It was 2p5, but it's minus, so now it's 2p6. Same for neon, 1s2, 2s2, and 2p6. All right, so those are the same. Uh, when you're looking at a radius, you have to know what you're looking at. What you're looking at is you're looking at your uh, nucleus, which has the protons and uh, your neutrons. So fluorine has nine protons. It doesn't matter what isotope that you are using. So the isotope of fluorine will determine the number of neutrons. Uh, when you're doing the radius, it's all about the protons versus the electrons. All right. And so then in the one energy level, you've got two electrons for the 1s2. And then in the second energy level, uh, you have both the 2s2 and the 2p6. The 2s2 and the 2p6. So there's eight of them. All right. And so you would draw exactly the same thing for your neon, except for one difference. And that is 10 protons here. All right, and so you have your two electrons here, just like there, and then you got your eight electrons in the second energy level, so you would write in eight electrons around that. All right, so that's what it looks like. So the radius is your nucleus to your outermost electron. All right, and so when you look at this as a cartoon, you might think, well, that's going to be the same. There's 10 electrons. It is not the same. Here is a nine plus nine protons plus nine trying to hold 10 electrons. So your outermost electron. So nine protons holding 10 electrons. Not going to hold it very tight. All right. Here we have 10 protons holding 10 electrons. And so they're going to hold it much tighter. And so the more negative, the larger your radius. So the more negative, or you could say that as less positive, uh, it's going to be a larger radius for the reason of the number of protons trying to hold the number of electrons. All right. So when you have Na plus <clears throat> or F minus versus Ne, all right, so F minus is more negative. When you have your Na plus versus your neon, 
All right, so now you have the same electron configuration again, except we're gonna draw the same picture, except when we're doing sodium, we have 11 protons trying to hold on to 10 electrons, and that's gonna hold them very tightly. And so this is gonna be a very small radius, okay? So more negative, all right? Uh, less positive is gonna have a larger radius. So here's plus one, here is neutral. That's less positive. All right, now you still have the periodic trend. So when you have your Mg plus two and your calcium plus two, that has the same charge. So it's the same positive, it's plus two. All right, and so you just go with the regular rules for your radius. It increases as it goes down, it decreases as it goes to the right. So if they're the same charge, both neutral, both negative, both positive, both positive two, then you find it on your periodic table. On your periodic table, you're looking on your periodic table, and you find your Mg it is right here. And then you see that calcium is right below it. All right, and so you're increasing as you go down. And so the larger radius is your calcium plus two. All right, but if you did Na plus versus uh, your Mg plus two, now it's not about the periodic trends. It is all about, it is not the same charge. So the one that is less positive, positive one is less positive than positive two, that's gonna be the larger radius. Versus Na versus Mg. All right, and so we know it is decreasing as you go to the right. All right, so it decreases as you go to the right. And so your Na is here, your Mg is here. And so still it's Na is larger, but for a different reason. This one is all about the charge is the reason. And this one is about the periodic trends is the reason. All right, the last one, number 12, uh, de Broglie wavelength. So when it asks for the de Broglie wavelength, that is an equation, and that is your wavelength is equal to Planck's constant over your mass times your velocity. All right, and so we're looking for the de Broglie wavelength of an oxygen molecule traveling at a speed of 500 meters per second. All right, and so we have H, it is a constant, and that is 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34. Now, the units for that is joules times seconds. I need to break up a joule. You need to know that a joule is a kilogram meter squared per second squared. To get this right, you need to write it as a kilogram meter squared per second squared times seconds. So that is a joule times seconds. So the units that it gives you is joules times seconds. You need to know that that is a joule times a second. All right, so in the denominator, we have our velocity, 500 meters per second. And we see that that is what we want because this second is gonna cancel this second this second here is gonna cancel the final second there. This meter cancels one of the meters there, but now we need a mass and we need to write the units of a joule because now we see that our units for the mass must be in kilograms in order to get our wavelength in meters. All right, so now you gotta figure out how to get the mass of an oxygen molecule to be in kilograms, all right. So when you see the word atom or molecule, it should remind you that you're gonna need Avogadro's number. So you have one oxygen molecule. The only <clears throat> constant that you have that has the word molecule in it is Avogadro's number. So there are 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd oxygen molecules in one mole of oxygen. 
All right, but we don't want our answer in moles. We want it in uh, kilograms, all right? So again, oxygen molecule, the next reason why people will miss this. One, they don't use Avogadro's number. Two, they use O instead of O2. Oxygen is O2. And so you have 32.00 grams per mole of O2. That is an oxygen molecule. So again, and then the last reason why you would miss it is you just put the mass in grams, which would not cancel kilograms. So now you have to get rid of grams and get kilograms. And that is 10 to the third. So you then divide that by a thousand. So you grab your calculator and you have one divided by, okay, so show what cancels, what cancels your oxygen molecule, cancels oxygen molecule, moles of O2, cancel moles of O2, grams, cancel grams, and you are left with kilograms, which is what has to be the unit here so that it cancels with this kilogram, and now you're left with just a meter, which is a wavelength. So one divided by 6.022, times 10 to the 23rd, times 32, divided by 1 times 10 to the 3rd. And that is 5.314 times 10 to the minus 26. All right, so again, a molecule is extremely tiny. That's why we need uh, Avogadro's number of them in order to get a mole of them. All right, and so the mass of that is going to be extremely tiny. All right, so then we just push the buttons. Take our 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 divided by 5.314 times 10 to the minus 26, and then you divide that by 500. And you get a wavelength of 2.494 times 10 to the negative 11 meters. All right, and so then the question may have the answers in picometers. So if you wanna go from meters to picometers, you have to know pico is 10 to the minus 12. And so if you push the buttons on your calculator, uh, you would get 24.94 picometers. So if the question doesn't state what units, then just leave it in the units that you get, meters. So that is the end of that review. All right, so let's work this problem. So use your periodic table, uh, and we're going to do the electron configuration. And four quantum numbers. Uh, four, so we're going to do, let's do potassium. We're going to do... Uh, Palladium, we're going to do uh, lead, all right, and then uh, we'll also do uranium, okay, so that's going to be our first question, and then our second question is going to be uh, just the electron configuration. And this is for, uh, let's do palladium plus one. Let's do lead plus four. And let's do uranium plus two. Oh, should be a C. I skipped the potassium. All right, so let's work on those. All 
All right, I'm going to do potassium to make sure that uh, you're doing them correctly. All right, so I go to the first prior noble gas, which is argon. So I put argon in brackets. I know that is going to be 18 of my 19 electrons that I need. And so then I go to potassium and I count down one, two, three, four. That is the 4S1. So that is what you should have for your electron configuration. All right, the four quantum numbers. So again, when you do the four quantum numbers, the first one is simply the number, so that's four. Then again, L, I've written this many, many, many times. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, goes to N minus one. That is your S, P, D, F, G, H, I, alphabetical order. And so when I see that I have a 4S, I know that my L value is zero. <clears throat> I know that S has one orbital. And if you only have one orbital, the number is zero. And when I put in my orbital, I see that it has to go in the orbital spin up first. And that's all I need. And so you, your answer for that one should be argon 4S1. And then your four quantum numbers should be a 4001 half. All right, so PD, again, KR, noble gas core, that is 36. All right, so then you have your 5S2 after that, and then you have your 4D8. So when you see PD, if you can see it, it has 46 as the atomic number. All right, and so that is your electron configuration. Again, uh, the book answer would be 4D85S2. They put it in number order. I don't care what order uh, you're putting it in. All right, but the then four quantum numbers for the 4D8. Again, the first one is the number four. D, we're back up here, S, P, D. D for the second quantum number is A2. Then you have your uh, D subshell. You have to know the D subshell holds 10 electrons. There are 10 elements in the Ds, so we can go up to 10. That means there are five orbitals. Orbital in the middle is zero. All right, we put in our eight electrons, Hun's rule. All right, and our eighth electron goes down in orbital number zero. Those are your four quantum numbers. All right, so lead, first part noble gas, Xe. That's 54. Cesium is 55. That starts to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, S, 2. Then we go down to the Fs. The first F is the 4F. That is the first row of Fs. So all 14 of those are required. All right, so then we come back up to the D. That is then the 5D. All of those are full. And then we get to the 6P2. And when you add them up, <clears throat> you get 82. 46 plus 2 plus 14 plus 10 plus 2. That is your 82 electrons. It is neutral. So your protons, the atomic number, equal the electrons. All right, and then the four quantum numbers for the 6P2. The first quantum number is the number 6P right here. <clears throat> Second quantum number, P. If it is P, then it is a 1, 6, 1. Then you have to know that the P orbitals, there are three of them, and they are 0, a negative 1, and positive 1. Always the number in the middle is 0. <clears throat> we're putting in two electrons, so we go up and up, and we're done. <clears throat> and so it's in orbital number 0 with a spin up, 1 half. All right, so uranium, first prior noble gas, Rn. 
Uh, then we go to 87 again, the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, S, 2. And then the 5, F, 4 to give you your total of 92. So now you need the four quantum numbers for the 5, F, 4. All right, so the first one, well, that's the number, 5, F. We come up here, we see that F, the number for F is 3. Then you have to know the F has seven orbitals. The one in the middle is zero. So negative three, negative two, negative one, one, two, three. All right, and we need to put in four electrons. So one, two, three, and four. And so we stopped in orbital number zero with the spin up. So that is zero and that is one half. All right, so your PD plus right here is your palladium's electron configuration. All right, so again, we write it any way you want. The book always puts it number order for D8, 5S2. The reason why they do that is because the rule for taking electrons out is you always take them out of the higher N quantum number. And so this is KR and we have to take it out of the 5s. So this is then a 5s1 and a 4d8. All right, your lead plus four. So your lead electron configuration is here. All right, so if you wrote it in this order, you may take the first two out of the 6p, which is correct. Then you might take the next two out of the 5d and that is incorrect. All right, so that's why you would put it in number order, 4F14, 5D10, then the 6S2, then the 6P2. All right, so which one do you take it out of first if they're both sixes? So if you have a tie for your N quantum number, then you go to the higher L quantum number. And so for the P, L is one, for the S, L is zero. So the first two will come out of the 6P2. And that would give you a lead plus two. So if lead plus two was the question, you'd just get rid of the 6P2. All right, we need to get rid of another two electrons and that's gonna be out of the other energy level six and we're getting rid of the 6S2. So the electron configuration here is 4F14, 5D10. Once we remove the four electrons, two from the 6P and two from the 6 S. All right, uranium, we just did that one right here. All right, and so when we pull two electrons out again, you should write it 5F4, 7S2. And it, the only reason why you should write it that way is to remember that you're pulling the electrons out of the 7S2. They do not come out the same way they go in. And so this is simply Rn and then 5F4. Always take them out of the highest N quantum number. If there is a tie, then you go to the highest L quantum number. All right, so the next question is gonna to be to give the charge. So you have to find your atomic number and see how many electrons are put in there in order to get the charge. Uh, then determine if that is the ground state for that charge, the excited state for that charge, or a forbidden state for that charge. All right, so I picked ones that we did previously. We did potassium. So uh, we have our electron configuration of potassium. It is right here. All right, so potassium is number 19, which means it has... The atomic number is 19, that's the number of protons. The number of electrons given in this problem, argon has 18, and then the 4s2, that is two more. So this has 20 electrons. When you have 20 electrons and 19 protons, that means that you have a K, that is a minus one charge. All right, so once you have the charge, then you have to determine if that is the ground state, excited state, or forbidden state for that charge. So if the question was, 
give the electron configuration of K minus, what would you give? Well, you would give argon, and after the argon comes the 4s, but we don't want a 4s1, that would be neutral. We would give a 4s2. So that is the ground state of K minus. All right, so palladium. The electronic configuration of palladium, we already did it. It is right here. All right, so it is number 46. Palladium is number 46. Atomic number is 46, which means it has 46 protons. And so when we add these up, Kr has 36 plus the 4d8. All right, so now we're at 44. We lost two electrons. That means that you have 46 pluses and 44 minuses, which means you have an excess of two pluses. So this is palladium plus two. All right, so that is the charge. Now you have to give the electron configuration of palladium plus two and then see if that is what you got here. If that is what's given, then that's the ground state. If that is not what's given, then it's either going to be excited state or a forbidden state. All right, and so when you look at your palladium, which is right here, we know that when we remove two electrons, it has to be removed from the higher number. And so you would write Kr, and then you would write 4d8. Again, this is the ground state of a palladium plus two. All right, lead. So we have lead, it is right here, all right? And so we again see that what happened here was we still have our six Ps, we still have our five Ds, we still have our four Fs. We no longer have our six S2. We lost two electrons from our correct electron configuration. And so again, we have a plus two. We lost two electrons, that is plus two. All right, so now you have to write your electron configuration for your palladium plus two. And that would be a 5s2, 4f14, 5d10, because we take them out of the highest n quantum number. And when there's a tie, then it's the highest l quantum number. All right, so this electron configuration does not match this one. So that just tells us, well, it's not the ground state. If you were asked to write the electron configuration of palladium plus two, this would be the ground state. This then is not the same as this. That is not the ground state. All right, so we took the two electrons out of the wrong orbital. All right, and so that is a, an excited state. All right, so if you take them out of the wrong orbital, then you're gonna have an excited state. Uh, if I had a similar question with palladium and I said it is Xe and it was plus two here. Well, I tell you that yet. Okay. Um, I'm going to pick another plus two. Uh, this time I'm going to have a 4F14 and a 5D12. All right. So this is a palladium plus two. So it still has. Uh, after the noble gas core, 14 and 12, 26, 14 and 12, 26. So it is still a plus two. Definitely not the ground state. I have circled the ground state. It is right there. All right. And so then you have to determine, is this an excited state or a forbidden state? And as soon as you see that you put 12 electrons in a D subshell, that is forbidden. You can fit a maximum of 10 electrons in a D subshell. If you have more than 10, it is forbidden. So any subshell that has more than its capacity, that is when you're gonna have a forbidden. Uh, or you could put in, uh, let's do a potassium. Let's say I have potassium and I put argon 3F1. All right, and so you would have to see that, okay, argon is 18, here's another one, potassium's 19, so this is neutral. Definitely not the ground state, because that's 4s1, all right? 
So you can do this one of two ways. One, you can know that the F starts at four, and so you cannot have a three F. Three F does not exist. If you're putting it in a uh, subshell that does not exist, well, then that's forbidden. All right, and if you tried the quantum numbers, you would get a three and then you would get a three. So the first one is a three, the second one is a three. That is an invalid set of quantum numbers because once you have three, your next number can be zero, one, or two, up to n minus one. When your n is three, you can only be zero, one, or two. So if you have a three and a three, that is also not allowed, that is forbidden. All right, so the two ways that you can get forbidden, uh, put too many electrons in a subshell uh, or pick a subshell that doesn't exist in that energy level. All right, so on the first one, you had the element, you gave the electron configuration and the four quantum numbers. So it could just be, here's the four quantum numbers and give the element. All right, so if the first one is a four, three, zero, and negative one half, again, your L is the key. L, you need to know that zero, one, two, three, four, S, P, D, F, G, again, that goes out to N minus one. All right, so a four, three is a four F. So the first number, you just write it down. The second one, that's where you have to know that that is the L. All right, so the F, you know that that is seven orbitals because the F electrons, there are 14 of them as you have in your periodic table, 14 F elements. All right, so now we number them, always the one in the middle is zero, so negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, three. And we are gonna go until we are in zero, but we have to be a negative one half. So Hun's rule, the bus seat rule, you put one electron in each orbital before you're going to pair them up. All right, and so then you go spin down and you're gonna stop when you are in orbital zero with a spin down. So then you add them up, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, four F 11. Now to find that element, you go to your periodic table. You're looking for a 4F11. So here is the 4F. F starts at four. You just count over 11. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. HO is your element. So you would simply write the element is HO. All right, a five, one, zero, one half. So again, first number, you just write it down, five. All right, the one, again, you go to your L quantum numbers. When you are one, you are a P. So that is a five P. All right, so you have to know that the P's have three orbitals. There are six elements in all of the P's, two elements in all of the S's, 10 elements in all of the D's, and 14 elements in all the Fs. And so each orbital holds two electrons. Again, the orbital number in the middle is always zero. Negative one and one. We are gonna go until we are in zero and we have a spin up. And that just requires two electrons in the 5P. So the 5P2, you go to your periodic table and find the element that is a 5P2. You have to know that S starts at one, P starts at two. So that's the two P, three P, four P, five P, count over two, S N is your element. All right, so you have to be able to get the four quantum numbers. You also have to go from the four quantum numbers to the element. All right, so if you have balanced reaction with sodium and oxygen, grab your periodic table, you know that sodium is gonna be uh, in the plus one column. So sodium is plus one. Oxygen is in the minus two column. 
And so to get a neutral compound, A has to be an A2O. All right, because you need two pluses to neutralize the one oxygen that's minus two. And then to balance that, we need a two in front here, and then that means four sodiums, one O2. All right. So now we have our reaction. We're going to stick A in here, which is N2O. And A 2 O and A 2 O. All right, so that's sodium oxide. And then we're going to react that with water. So what you have to know is that sodium is a metal. So this is a metal oxide. And when you add a metal oxide to water, you're going to get a base. And so that base is NaOH. All right, and so you have two sodiums, you need two NaOHs to balance that reaction. All right, so anytime you're burning a metal, the column number is going to give you the charge of that metal, and then you make a neutral oxide. And then when you react that with water, you're going to get the base, the hydroxide from that metal. Now, we have Se. We have nothing that we have memorized with Se in it but you have to know periodic trends. And so right above SE on your periodic table is sulfur. And so we do know that we have sulfuric acid, H2SO4. And so periodic trends will say, all right, this one will work the same, H2SEO4. And so again, that is your sulfuric acid and this is your selenic acid. All right, so then you're going to have also H2SO3. You're also going to have H2SEO3. So again, periodic trend. Whatever is in that column in the periodic table, they are all going to have similar chemistry. And so uh, your oxidation numbers will be the same. So then you have to remember how to do oxidation numbers. All right, and so your uh, oxygen is always minus 2, so this is minus 8. Hydrogen's always plus one, so that's plus two. And so you have a plus six selenium. Again here, oxygen's minus two, that's minus six. Hydrogen's plus one, that's plus two. And so this has to be a plus four. All right, and so when you have a plus six and an O minus two, so you have an SE that's plus six and an O that's minus two, all right, so the common multiple is six. And so here we would have SEO3. And to balance that, we put a two here, a two here, and a three here. The SE plus four, it doesn't matter if you call that one C or D. So, uh, but then you're going to have an SE that's plus four and an O that's minus two. The common multiple there is four. And so this is SEO2. And that one's already balanced. All right, so then when you take your SeO3 and you add H2O, that's when you get your H2SeO4, an acid. So this is a non-metal oxide, and it is going to give an acid. Uh, All right, and so then you have your S. 2SEO2 plus H2O, and that's going to give you your H2SEO3. And those are balanced as written. And so again, this is a non-metal oxide. And that is going to give you an acid. So you have to know your when you react with water. So your metal oxides, when they react with water, give you the hydroxide base. And then your non-metal oxides react with water to give you your acid. Now, you're going to have to remember your acids from the previous chapter. All right, so you have to know your uh, nitric acid, HNO3. You got to know your phosphoric acid, H3PO4. You got to know your sulfuric acid, H2SO4. Uh, you have to know your carbonic acid, H2CO3. Uh, you have to know your... Chloric acid, HClO3. Uh, not sure if there's any others on your sheet. 
uh, manganic acid, HMNO3. Uh, all right, and so then when you, you have to know the ic acid and you have to know how to get to the us acid, which is just remove an oxygen. So HNO2, and that is nitrous acid, H3PO3, that is phosphorus acid, h 2 SO3, that is sulfurous acid, H2CO2, that is carbonous acid, HClO2, that is porous acid, HMNO2, that is manganous acid. All right, so you have to uh, know your ic acid and your us acid, and then you have to know how to get the oxidations. All right, so if we go to the carbon here, because we know the answer to the carbon, but we can then confirm it here. Minus six plus two, so this uh, carbon is plus four. Minus four plus two, this carbon is plus two. Because when we burn carbon and oxygen, we know that we get CO2. And so we know that that is a plus four carbon. Yes, that is uh, a plus four carbon from the carbonic acid. Uh, we also know that when we burn carbon, we get carbon monoxide. All right, so balance that. You got two there and a two there. And that is when your carbon is a plus two, and that is from the carbonous acid. So knowing the acid and the ic acid and the us acid, then you know your oxidations for your nonmetals.